Hi everybody, it's Frank here. In this, my second part of the How to Use VirtualBox series, I'm going to cover a bunch of other useful things to know and use so that you can get more out of using VirtualBox. We're going to cover capturing and using other devices like USB drives. I'm going to show you how to work the shared clipboard, uh, screen capture, drag and drop, machine state, seamless windows, all kinds of good stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are on my Windows 7 host machine. I've got both of my, my Linux Mint 17.1 virtual machine and the Windows 8.1 virtual machine running. Let me minimize this. And you can see them both here. Now everything that we're going to be covering in this video assumes that you've installed the extension pack for VirtualBox and also that in the virtual machines that you've installed the guest additions in there. It's very important. A lot of this won't work without that. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to capture and connect to USB devices like thumb drives or USB hard drives and also CDs and DVDs in your virtual machine. Now one thing you need to keep in mind, if your host machine is a Linux machine, you won't be able to access USB devices unless you add your username to the VBox users group and in Windows that's not an issue but if your host machine not your virtual machine but your host machine is a Linux machine you need to add yourself to the VBox users group in this case my host machine is Windows 8 so I've got no issues here but let me just quickly show you how to do this and I've got my Linux virtual machine up here running this is Mint 17.1 and what I'm going to show you will work in most distros of Linux Keep in mind, I'm just going to demo this here, but on your machine, you'll be doing this on the host Linux machine, not in the virtual machine. Let me show you how to add yourself to the VBox users group. And you just open up a terminal window, and you just type sudo, or super user do, user mod, dash A, dash capital G, and then VBox users, that's the group we want to add ourselves to. And then your username. And your username, if you happen to not know what it is, says so right here. It's this HRH in my case. And just hit enter, put your password in. And see, in my case, it says that the user group VBox users doesn't exist, and that's because I'm in a virtual machine. But that's what you would do if you were on your host machine and your host machine was running Linux. And a way to check what groups you're a member of, just to make sure it, it took, is just go to groups and then your username and it shows a list of all the groups that you're a member of so and when you're done you should have over here vbox users somewhere so that's it for that and let me show you how to capture a usb thumb drive in this machine i just plugged in a thumb drive into the host machine here and it brought up this autoplay nonsense i don't want that so i'll just cancel that and in my linux vm all you want to do is click on devices and then go to USB devices and there's the name of my drive and just click on that and it'll put a little check mark next to it and then it should open that and there it is and when it does this one thing to keep in mind and you do need to keep this in mind if you had this drive installed on your host machine whichever machine it is and it was being used there as soon as you select that in devices to attach to your virtual machine it's going to disconnect that from your host machine so if it was writing files or something to it you just essentially unplug that while it was writing and you're going to have some troubles there so keep in mind have your have your virtual machine open insert your drive capture it by just clicking on the drive itself in devices USB devices and capture it here and then eject it from here when you're done with it and you should be good now with a CD or DVD drive all you need to do is just when there's a disk in the drive just come up to devices CD DVD devices and click on host drive D and that should open up your CD drive or give you access to it and there it is and it's the same process if you're using Windows or another type of virtual machine. You just go in here to Devices and select that host drive D. And there it is. Good to go. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you a really cool feature called Shared Clipboard. And this is a really neat feature where you can use the clipboard on your host machine and copy back and forth whatever you can put in your clipboard to a virtual machine or vice versa. And this is disabled by default for security, but it's real easy to enable and you can enable it in two ways. So the first way you can set it when the machine is not running is just go into settings and on the general section here click on the advanced tab and you have shared clipboard here and by default it's disabled and you can set this host to guest, guest to host or bi-directional. Now you can actually set this while the VM is running and that's one way to do it when the machine is turned off. I'm just going to cancel that here and show you how to do it when the machine is on. It's real easy. Let me minimize this. Just go in here to devices and go to shared clipboard and just change that to bi-directional and you can kind of you know leave it set there if you want or change it back and forth turn it off when you're done with it. Let me show you how to do this. I've got a little text document here in my Linux machine and I've got a text document on my Windows 7 machine and I want to just copy this text out of here so I'll copy and I can paste it in there and I can also copy and paste the other direction. Very cool, very neat feature. Okay, the next thing I want to show you, it's not so much a really super trick, but it's useful at times, and that is if you want to run the machine in full screen mode, and we just go to full screen, host plus the F key, and the host of course is your right hand control key. So we'll just go to full screen, and switch. You can tell it not to show this message again. In part one of this series, I mentioned changing your virtual machine to run in full screen mode, and you'll have this little pop-up that comes up at the bottom of the screen, and that's where you can get all the controls here, machine view, devices, all this good stuff, and you can minimize the machine and then just come back to it. It allows you to run everything in full screen and still easily swap between them. And one kind of neat thing about this is this little pop-up screen, but by default it's at the bottom of the screen. And if you have a bunch of open windows and things, it kind of becomes annoying because it keeps popping up when you don't want it to. And one way around that is to have this moved to the top of the screen. And the way to do that is to click on Settings. And in the general, click on the advanced tab and just select this little box here, show at top of screen. And that's how you do that. Okay, now I want to show you another cool feature that's been included in more recent versions of VirtualBox, and that is screen capture. And what that does is literally capture your screen and turn it into a video file. And the way to set that up is you can go into display and click on video capture and it's disabled by default. Go ahead and enable that and you can change the file path and uh, this, the frame size and frame rate and quality and all those good things to something that you like. Remember when you change this file path it'll ask you for a name which is just going to be the name of the file it saves. You need to add this .webm w -E -B -M, because that's the file format it, it does. And then once you have that set, disable this because Otherwise, as soon as we hit OK with a virtual machine going, it'll start recording. So just disable that and go ahead and leave it disabled. And I'll show you how you can get that started when you've got the machine running. So I open up my Windows 8 machine here. It's the same thing on Linux. And just go into Devices and click on Video Capture. And as soon as you click on that, it's going to start recording this. So we'll just tell that to record. Let me open up something here and I'm going to tell that to stop and just click it again to turn that off. Now let's go back and check this out. I've got it saved onto my desktop and you can play these files with uh, VLC Media Player. Works very well. So we'll just double click on that and there's our file. It's playing away here and they come out pretty nice. So one thing to keep in mind if you enable this setting before you turn on the virtual machine then the virtual machine will record the entire time that it's running. It'll record all the startup of the virtual machine 
and keep going until you close the virtual machine and shut it down. So I recommend you keep this disabled. Go ahead and enable it to set your settings the way you like them and then disable this here and then just enable it as you need it in the virtual machine so you don't create some kind of gigantic file. And that is screen capture. Very cool. Now I want to show you a really cool feature that I really like that only works with Linux virtual machines and that is drag and drop. And why is it only work in Linux virtual machines? I don't know. It's a Linux thing. But it is very cool and it's a little misleading and let me show you why. What we can do here is you go into devices and you select drag and drop which is disabled by default for security and you can select host to guest, guest to host or bi-directional and what this means, I'm going to select bi-directional it means that you can drag a document from your host machine, my Windows 7 machine in this case and literally copy that document right onto your Linux machine and open it there. And that is really cool. But the trick to this whole thing is that you cannot copy back. If you try to, it just doesn't work. It, it is only supported host to guest only right now and only with a Linux virtual machine. So even though the buttons are already there, you know, bi-directional is already there, and you can see this on the Windows machine as well. It only works host to guest on Linux virtual machines. Now, hopefully, they'll get this thing working in both directions with Linux, so I can copy from Linux to the, the host machine. Yeah, I mean, they've already got the buttons there, and it's already got host to guest, guest to host, and bi-directional. So, yeah, I think we might be getting close to that. It's, it's no small feat of programming to get this done, by the way. I applaud them greatly for getting it to work in one direction. That's pretty good. So we shall see what comes in the future. Now, in Windows and Linux and any other virtual machine, you can do a thing called sharing a folder with a host operating system. And I'll show you how to set that up in an upcoming video in this series. And that's something that I use all the time to move files back and forth between my virtual machines and the host computer if you need to do that. So that is drag and drop. Linux only virtual machines, folks. Okay, now I want to show you another really cool feature with VirtualBox. And that is saving the machine state and shutting down the machine. And let me give you an example of that. Let's say you're working on this text document here. You've got that open. And let's say you had a terminal window open, you were doing something with that. And you've got these things going here. And let's say we have our Windows 8 machine. And I don't know, we've got File Manager open. And we're doing stuff with that. And we want to shut these things down. But we want to save the machine state instead of shutting it down. And what you want to do is click on the little close window at the top. Just click on that and select Save Machine State. Click OK to that. And that will save this as a file here for a little bit. And it will close it down. And it shows it as being saved. And I can do the same thing with Windows. Just tell that to Save Machine State. Give it a second here to save that. And they both show up here as saved. I'm just going to go ahead and restart them. And they start up pretty quick too. Start up the other one. And they pick up exactly where they left off. You got, uh, we got our documents open here, Windows open. This is similar to um, like on a laptop when you just close the lid and it suspends the uh, operation. So pretty cool feature. Hope you can get some use out of that as well. Okay, last but least, I want to show you something that's a feature I haven't really used very much because I found it to be a bit buggy. And I'm not entirely sure how useful this is, but it's kind of cool and you might find some use out of it. And that is Seamless Windows. And you can use this on Windows Virtual Machines and Linux Virtual Machines as long as the Linux machines are running the X window system, which Linux Mint does and many other ones do. So let me show you how this works. Let me open a window file system. Now let's say I want this on my Windows 7 desktop. So all you got to do, you can go in here to view and click on 
host and the L key and switch to seamless mode or just click this and switch now look at that look at this weird thing I've actually got this window floating on top of my Windows 7 machine and I can go in here and do things in here just like normal I can even close it and to get back your Linux machine your virtual machine that you did that from just use that right hand control key and the L key again and that brings it right back up like I said I'm not entirely sure how useful this is but it's kinda cool you can even have a, a uh, Linux terminal window open in there let me try that look at that there's a Linux terminal window in Windows 7 now that is pretty cool well I hope you found this part two useful and informative if you did give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already make sure and subscribe to my channel because you'll want to check out the other parts in this VirtualBox series. There's probably three to four more of them I'm going to be putting up. And there's some very useful stuff in there. So you don't want to miss those. So until next time, cheers.